Okay. Hello and welcome to another Albion Online Dev Talk. Hello. We've been very busy here at Sandbox Interactive, and so have you. A great many new and old players have joined the launch of Albion East and pushed Albion to new levels of popularity. Welcome and welcome back to all of you and many thanks for a crazy and fun launch experience. It's so cool to see a new world rising, driven just by you, the players. Now that Albion East is successfully underway, it's time to talk about what's coming next for Albion Online. Well, first of all, the Rites of Spring will return to Albion soon. And since the event was very popular last year, it's returning mostly as you know it. Except this time around, our fluffy spring cottontail is accompanied by a bad-tempered buddy. More on that soon, Patch. Which is currently finishing production and brings additional content. Hey, so somebody come get that man the haircut. Leave Robin Henkeys alone, all right? He's been working hard on Albion and the East launch, right? He's not had time for a haircut, all right? He's got a bit of a mop going on. Story man. You know, he's he's gone through various haircuts over a stage of his career. I think I think that's that's you know that's we'll 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 just leave it. The Kalian content is already in the game on the market. Okay, okay, so it's already there. Some adjustments for the yeah, that's fine. And various utility improvements. Do not defend just in Bieber hair. Key feature: the new Dungeons in the Mists will be covered in detail in their own dev talk. Yeah. So we're getting a we're getting a, a new dev talk about this stuff, I guess. Um, yeah. Again, there's there's limits to. I just have to be careful. Um, as 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 a playtester for the game, I can't talk about stuff that I'm not allowed to. So I'm probably just going to skip over this section. Beyond those, the team is already working on Albion's next major update and making plans for beyond that. Here, I want to give you some insight into what topics we're working on and how we're currently approaching the development process. Because Albion has become quite large and complex, we need a development strategy that allows us to maintain, improve, and revolutionize the game at the same time. So, just as his words there that he said, Albion has become quite complex. I do wonder if that's in large been in response to the Joss Strife Hayes video, where they paid, they paid him to do a, you know, the Albion video, which I think was a really well done video. And I think one of his main comments there that Albion has lots of like simple basic systems, but then when you pile everything on top of each other, it becomes really like quite a lot. And I do wonder if that's kind of been something where they've taken that to heart really, and then they're looking to develop past it, which if it is, is, is pretty cool, honestly. Internally, we have three main development directions. Better basics, continuous content, and fantastic features. Um, Albion's development strategy. Albion has become quite large and complex, requiring a development strategy that allows us to maintain, improve, and revolutionize gameplay at the same time. Okay, so their idea here is better basics, continuous content, and fantastic features. So they're going for some alliteration to help them out in this uh, exploration of, of the future of Albion. Um, consistent improvement of the core aspects of the game, especially why it's most impactful. Improved marketplace experience, repair all, sell all, Thank God, chat, for this. Thank God for this. Like, I honestly, honestly, I, I, this has been such a huge thing. As someone who's mained PvP in the game for eight years, one of the biggest time sinks I've had to deal with this whole time is selling loot that I've got from brutally murdering other players. Like, taking their stuff, and, and I just can't be asked to sell it most of the time because it takes for every single one, you have to click the sell button, you have to undercut the last sell, even if it's just one silver, you have to, so you have to click the sell, you have to click minus one, and then you have to click list. And you have to do that for every single piece of gear you get from every player, from all, and it just, it just mounts up to be this, this ridiculous thing. I can spend hours selling my loot from a week of gameplay. And, and, and most of the time I just don't because it's such a it's such a huge pain in the ass. Um, so, you know, that's that's good. We already have a repair all feature, so I don't really know what that's about, but yeah. A bit cheesy, I know, but they're easy to remember. A little bit. Better basics means a part of our effort is always spent on improving the core functionality of the game, especially in places where it is most impactful. Currently in development in this category, 
We have improved marketplace functionality like a repair all and sell all function, along with yeah, better again. filtering Fantastic. and better handling of large scale purchases and pickups. We're Very good. also working on delivering a more stable loot experience, especially for high value chests, by reworking how the black market distributes loot internally. And then. This, this is honestly such a really big deal because there's been so much stuff with the black market where, again, players. A lot of us on the round table have given them feedback and their responses have always been the same where that you know they're not really seeing a lot of this stuff by the way chat what the f is this thing what is this thing dude what is this little thing sat under this guy is, is that going to be like a little dog is that like one of them little hairless dogs is it a rat dude i have no idea but it's horrifying um there has definitely been something fundamentally wrong in terms of how the black market distributes loot. You can go to a full loot area, risk your gear set for a for a what should be a high value chest, and just get nothing. And then you have people literally printing money in like 10v10 Hellgates, going in with two teams in 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 garbage as as much as they can be with the IP requirement to enter uh, sets to just farm millions of silver. Again, we'll see what they're going to do with this. I don't know how it's going to be, if it's going to be a technical level, like what they're going to do to, to ensure a better consistent base, if that's going to improve the black market so that players, uh, you know, are, are more likely to want to craft and sell to it. You know, we'll, we'll have to see, but I'm, I'm excited about that. All right, chat. We're working on fixing economic issues like the current stone market, reworking crafting capacity, as well as being an improved role for the player islands in the current crafting economy. All in all, this category is packed with various improvements we're already working on. Okay, so I mean, yeah, it, again, there has been, I would say, and again, you guys feel free to weigh in on this in, in chat up here above. I would say that there has been almost little to no point in, in player or guild islands. Since the labor changes, uh, you know, with, with, with how ineffective it is to actually make money off your focus on your personal island with farming, like, I feel like personal islands, guild islands have just been absolutely pointless. Something that should be like something as a as a guild, as a community, you can come together to have like a thriving community hub. Nah, maybe you lose, you just like chest there to drop loot off, that's it. Personal island, yeah, why are you using personal islands? It's not really worth farming on them right now anymore, so then there's just no point to them. There's no point to the personal islands. You you have all the extended bank uh, tabs in, in, on, on the, the, you know, mainland. If we could have like one of those chests or something on our personal islands, maybe, you know, maybe I'd, I'd store stuff there as well. But it's like with all the multiple tabs in the, the guild banks now too, uh, or the uh, the um, the, the city banks, it just feels like so pointless to use uh, an individual island. Much needed, give royal or smaller guilds rewards for guild islands. It's something, we need something for sure. Did you know there was a marker on the guild islands? You know, one of the earliest pieces of feedback that I gave to SBI was about the auction house on your guild island. And that even if you upgrade your gear island to maximum tier, even if you upgrade all of the buildings on your island to maximum tier, the auction house on your guild island is still a shitty wooden shack, right? <laughs> right? But even then, there's, there's no point in using those those personal guild ones either. There's no real, because you still pay taxes. You still pay taxes. You should absolutely not have to pay taxes. Our second development direction, continuous content, means we constantly want to spend some of our production effort on expanding what we already have in the game. Okay. The most impactful place to do this is adding new gear choices to the you are what you wear. Faction warfare, that's existing content. That's, that's improvement of existing content. Adding new gear isn't expanding on existing content. I mean, you can kind of look at it like that because, okay, we have existing content is our gear. We add new gear, it's expanding on it. Sure, sure. But it's new content, fundamentally. It's new content. This is what this section should be about. If you want to improve existing shit, improve existing shit. Don't add more stuff into it and leave the rest of it as fundamentally redundant or broken, right? Dr. Paps, thank you for the T1 for five months now. Big, big love to the you are what you wear system 
so most of the focus will be on. She's very energetic. We'll have to check her out. In this category, we of course have the Rites of Spring event and the Beyond the Veil content patch coming up. Bring hey, exciting new stuff. And new equipment items to the I am very excited about the spring event. We've also started to work full scale on Albion's next weapon line for the Hunter Tree of the Destiny board. Finally, I just he doesn't speak about it at all. Full scale to me means that they have their abilities in mind, they have the animations that they're starting, and they have the artwork. So like. That, like, that means that they have this thing in development. So far, a lot of chat's leaning towards like a shaman kind of weapon, maybe more of a support line one. We were hoping for bard. We were hoping for a bard and a druid weapon line. So with a bard weapon line being about like support buffs, everything, we're talking like, you know, keeper war drums, like banging your drums in a ZVZ as your army charges into battle. You know, uh, like a little war horn for small scale where you're like buffing your team. Um, you know, with these, uh, with the Warhorn and stuff and, and having these different combinations of notes you can play together to, to kind of create different effects. I thought that'd be a really fun combination weapon line to be able to play. And then a Druid weapon line being like a, you know, the, the classic thing of like being able to transform into a bear or, you know, maybe a spider or something, whatever. Um, and then use the, use those different abilities and, and take the, the advantages of being in that kind of animal form. That was something I was kind of excited about the idea of, but I, I, I yeah, I, I don't know. I, I guess like a Shaman line would make sense, but I have no idea. I have no idea what it could be. So what do we think? Shaman? Shaman weapon line? That's a skull on top, by the way. You think that's a skull on top? That's, a, that's an interesting, that's an interesting, uh, uh, option. Um, could definitely be a skull on top. I think we've done pretty well. I think we've done pretty There's a butthole? Hang on, let me... Let me <laughs> it's, like, it's like, we just screen cap that. I can't be bothered to like screen cap, uh, to draw a butthole. Let me just screen cap a butthole and drag it onto the picture. Might, might be a little TOS if I just put a like complete... Just like in the middle of my Microsoft Paint drawing. I don't, I don't, I don't think that'd be a good idea. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think that would be the best of ideas for this particular project that I've been I'm working on here, you know. But um, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, chat. Let's get back to the video here for now. The fantastic features direction means we want to continue to bring you new features that expand the field <laughs> of Albion Online and try to offer you experiences you just cannot find in any other MMORPG. It's risky to talk about the features in this category because they're still constantly evolving and may not end up being in the game just how we imagined them, but I'd like to share two concepts we're currently working on. First is legendary weapons. Legendary weapons are a regular- <laughs> Sorry, I love how this dev squints his eyes in passion. A new legendary weapons coming in Albion online. <laughs> which become legendary through their use. This is this is a cool concept though. I do like this. These items can gain levels for completing challenges with them. What do what levels do? Legendary status, gaining unique traits and a unique name. Honestly like this 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 genuinely the reason why I actually am excited for this a lot is as an eight year long player of this game, I don't care about the full loot PVP. I just don't. I don't care about losing gear. I don't feel particularly excited about gaining gear. I enjoy that I can kind of make a living on the game through PVP, like, you know, um, but I just don't particularly care about the fact that it's a full loop PVP game anymore because it doesn't have the same hold on me that it used to, you know, when I was first playing about being afraid of death and, and having that way in and make the fights more intense. It doesn't do that for me anymore. Adding worth to a weapon, not wanting to lose my my gear set but anything else aside of the fact that i have lived on that weapon for a month i've almost got all the challenges complete i am close to making my weapon into a legendary weapon 
that would give me a reason to not want to die and to try and fight better to escape. So like that, this could be interesting. What makes a legendary item extra special is that instead of being destroyed on death, it has a chance to vanish and then being added to the legendary item loot pool. Okay, so to clarify the point that we read out earlier then, it doesn't, it doesn't get destroyed. Um, it doesn't get trashed, it just has a chance. But, but this, this, this means that they have to be incredibly hard to create. It needs to just not be an IP increase, because I, again, I, I, just, I just won't care, I feel. Other than having a legendary weapon cycling through the server, which will be really cool, which will be really, really interesting to, to have like a, a, the ability as a player to really create a lasting mark on, on the game and stuff. But it, it needs to not just be item power. It needs to fundamentally be something interesting, a statistic on the weapon. From the loot pool, it has a chance to drop as a regular loot drop. Weapon kill count would be cool. Equivalent base kill tracker. From the black market, and of course, still bearing the name of its creator. So that's that's interesting. So it's gonna it, it when it gets taken in, it's gonna take another item from the black market to replace it. So say if you had like a, an eight three, um, you know, curse staff, whatever. You got that to legendary status when the game ate that it would then eat an 83 curse staff to take out that from the game so it's not adding it into circulation it's kind of taking something else away so that that does solve my worries about them constantly adding into the game like these things if they're eating something out of the game of, of equivalence here taking that away uh, and replacing it instead with a legendary weapon and that's 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 good for the, the circulation of the economy i'm happy about that at least this allows you to truly leave a permanent mark on the world of Albion and to create a legendary <laughs> okay. item that becomes part of the game's history. The second okay. concept Interesting. in the fantastic features category we're very excited about are improvements we're making to the spell and ability system to better deal with walls and height differences. So why are we excited about that? Well, if we're all very excited about the potential. Height differences, then we can build proper castles and siege battles and even consider player build fortifications. And who wouldn't be excited about that? So player build fortification. Obviously, like that's what we talked about before. SBI's ability to actually properly deal with verticality in the game would be incredible. What's that gonna be like though? Right? What's that gonna be like? Is that perhaps giving you a range increase if you have the high ground? If you have a high ground, like, are you going to be able to shoot further? Making you like strategically want to hold a, a, a longer, you know, like a high ground position to be able to shoot down and defend a location like a castle, for example. Um, walls and as well, they mentioned specifically walls. Does that mean that we're not going to be able to just shoot through walls anymore? Some weapons can, some weapons can't. A good example is the Horfrost staff we're using, re uh, using recently. You try and shoot a whole frost staff snowball, it's going to hit a wall or any part of terrain, it's going to stop. Whereas you shoot a magic arrow on Warbow and it just goes through everything and doesn't care. Now, if wars are going to be actual effective ability blockers to, to shut off damage, that again makes wars and stuff a far more strategic location to use in any environment we have in the game that can simulate a wall. And, you know, what are they going to have counted as a wall um, in Albion? That, that is something that I find incredibly interesting. And, and and then what can you do to deal damage over it? Does that mean that if you can't deal damage through walls anymore, or if you have a shorter range, or if you can't shoot up on a wall with a direct damage weapon, but maybe you can call in an AOE, like how deep are they going to go with the system? I'm excited about the potential of them actually being able to deal with verticality, because verticality is something that is just so underutilized in every MMO in, in the modern age. Um, like It's one of the reasons I was excited to try out Throne and Liberty because it looks like they actually have a good grasp on their verticality and how to use it. But I, I want to try out Throne and Liberty for that reason. Maybe SBI can do something good here. I hope you enjoyed the short overview of what's going on in the development of Albion Online and are looking forward to the upcoming Rites of Spring as well as the Beyond the Veil content patch. Come back for more dev talks covering these and Albion's next major update coming soon. Okay, so next major update coming soon. I, I, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know where I feel about it because like, I feel like we've been promised so much stuff in the past. I feel like we've been promised so much stuff in the past that, that hasn't kind of come to fruition or has arrived very differently. 
when I when I watch a video like this, I'm, I'm very excited about the prospect for all these new features. But when I recognize the amount of development time that's going to go into them, I kind of realize that they're just not going to be able to put any real development time into fixing the stuff that we have right now that needs repair, that needs reform, that needs fundamental change to make it enjoyable and, and meaningful content in the game. Um, and especially when they talk about the their improvements of existing systems and when they directly mention adding new stuff as their way of improving existing systems it's like modifying what we have uh, you know again we talked about faction warfare you know the outpost systems and and everything else um just the, the mists and how they functionally work right now i mean again we're adding new dungeons into the mist that's really cool but like what about how the mists function roads of avalon improvements what's that going to bring what's what what are we talking about there with those improvements you know, I, I want to be excited about a lot of this new content, but when I think about the development time that's, that they're going to have to put into that, I, I do worry about like the lack of, you know, the actual like meaningful reform or improvement of the content that we have right now. Um, so I, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know where I'm at with it overall, personally. I, I want to be excited. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know necessarily if we uh, if we can really be excited uh we'll see we'll see